Good evening. You're watching Straight Talk with Eugene Chan. Our guest tonight is the Honorable Henry Tang, whom I'm sure is a familiar figure to all of us. He has served Hong Kong in many different capacities, including with the government, as our Chief Secretary for Administration. Tonight, we have invited Henry as the Chairman of the Board of the West Kowloon Cultural District Authority to tell us how the recent downturn in economy will affect the success of the West Kowloon Cultural District. Welcome, Mr. Tang. Thank you very much, Eugene. Henry, you have certainly made headlines recently when you make the comment that Hong Kong is suffering from internal bleeding if our, our, our economy is only relying on internal circulation with closed borders amid the pandemic situation. So it's a very se serious statement that you have made. Then why do you make that statement at this time? Well, actually, the timing was, uh, was not coincidental, Eugene, because I have been watching the Hong Kong economy come, coming from the private sector and in government and in many of their bodies for many, many years, for decades. So I think I know the culture of the Hong Kong economy and the whole system quite well. I'm really seriously worried that our economy is going to suffer irrep irreparable damage if we, we don't do anything uh, to put it back on the right track again. So while China's economy, the, the whole volume is big enough so that they, they can live on both internal circulation with exports uh, at the same time quite well, but we can't because our volume is much bigger than the 7 million people that we have in Hong Kong. So that's why I feel it is time for, for us to really put this on the front and center of government's agenda, together with some of the other issues like housing, which I, I know is very urgent. But it is important to address these issues sooner rather than later. Right, Henry, um, as you rightly said so, I mean, with your experience with decades with watching Hong Kong's economy. I mean, Hong Kong has always ranked very highly in the, in the world, if not the top, as a global city. And in fact, we brand ourselves as Asia's world city. I mean, we still rank world's freest economy, as you just see a recent survey. But if you look at um, the uh, wealthiest places in the world, we have slipped four places from eight to 12, with New York being top and Singapore number five. and we are out of the expatriate uh, favorite cities to, to choose from, livability. We are 50 out of 52. I mean, it's a quite a significant given the expat made up 10% of Hong Kong's population. Is that the reason why we are bleeding internally already? Well, first of all, Eugene, I wouldn't put a lot of emphasis on the number of, uh, of millionaires in Hong Kong in terms of rating. I obviously feel more at heart with people and how the normal people live and how they will cope with COVID and the economic challenges that we are facing. So I care about the normal people and how they will face this challenge going to the future. Um, but livability has always been a challenge. Uh, first, because of, how, of housing. And second, because Hong Kong has always relied ourselves on being in a regional center for managing businesses all around Asia. And we are losing that advantage. And Singapore has been very strategically uh, poaching our people, poaching our businesses, and poaching some of the regional headquarters, as well as important exhibitions. I know some of them will come back because businesses do galvanize back towards where most of the business uh, transactions are done. So some of them will come back, but not all of them will come back. Right, Henry, in the past shows, this issue has been brought up repeatedly. And we, we know that our quarantine arrangement is one of the major issues that has made a lot of expatriates find it very difficult to continue working or living here. So now we're down to three plus four day quarantine arrangement for overseas, overseas travel. And this has made Hong Kong residents travel easier compared to before, but definitely not very inviting for business travelers or, 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 or tourists because basically they can't go out to eat for seven days. I mean, this is, Hong Kong is a place that's a paradise. <laughs> so how can we go on? But if we couldn't relax everything, I mean, we may overload our medical system and without a dynamic zero a policy, 
we may not be able to open border with mainland. So what do we have a solution? Eugene, I support government's policy that we must protect two groups of people. And the two groups of people that any COVID policy must protect is first, our public health care system, that it mustn't collapse, mustn't be allowed to collapse or because there's an overload of cases. And we have seen this all over the world, how public health system collapses when there's a sudden surge of uh, COVID cases. Secondly, protecting the health and the, uh, on the lives of the Hong Kong people. And those are to our two main goals that we need to be very, very much aware of. So in that sense, I do support the government's policy that we must control the number of cases to a manageable uh, numbers so that our public health system do not become over overloaded. People will still be able to enjoy the excellent healthcare system that we do have. And I want to really thank all the healthcare workers that have contributed to our success. Many people have excellent comments mm -hmm. about the quality of the healthcare that we have in Hong Kong. And secondly, we need to protect the people of Hong Kong that we don't expose them to unnecessary risks of COVID infection. And if they do, if they do, how to protect their lives and their health. And I, I think the answer is vaccination. We now have a, a good vaccination rate for, for adults, but the rate for children and for the uh, senior population is still not desirable. It's not bad, but it's, not, it's still not very high. When you say that, it mean, looks like I mean, the government and the public, I mean, the community have been trying to push up the vaccination rate, but yes. it's still far from the most ideal rate you would like. So can we still afford to free up our quarantine arrangement in that sense? I would, I would suggest that government can differentiate between those who have fully vaccinated and those who have not fully vaccinated in terms of travel arrangements. So if they have fully vaccinated and they travel overseas, then when they come back, we can relax the entry requirements uh, substantially. Right. Uh, whether it's zero plus whatever or uh, subject to a certain number of tests uh, subsequently, I think we can relax those who are fully vaccinated. Those who have not fully vaccinated, we should infringe a stringer uh, quarantine arrangement okay. so that we do not want them to come back here and bring disease to us. Right. So, Henry, let's move on to the, the West Kowloon Cultural District. I mean, as you know, we had a record low number of tourists in Hong Kong and the real GDP growth forecast for 2022 being revised downwards to negative 0.5 to up to 0.5 percent. But you still managed to deliver two museums this year. I mean, the M Plus and the Palace Museum. Congratulations. So can you give us an update of what is the situation now with those two museums? They are the most recently delivered. Well, they have been enjoying a very, very good attendance and very well supported by those who have attended. M Plus, since its opening in November of last year, despite having closed for three and a half months in the middle because of COVID, we still recorded one and a half million visitors uh, in this period, right. which means Hong Kong people are really anxious to understand what art is all about. And what is even more encouraging is actually Palace Museum. Mm -hmm. Palace only opened in July of this year, so it has opened just over two months. But in these two months, we have, we have, we have welcomed 400,000 visitors to the Palace Museum already. And right now, getting a ticket to come to Palace has been the most challenging oh, really? <laughs> of, of the people and because they really want to come. I, I understand the Exhibits at Palace is more easy to understand because uh, they are very classical and they are Chinese and it's porcelain, it's uh, art, it's uh, paintings, it's sculptures and so on. So they are much more easy to understand for people who are not very experienced in terms of looking at art. Contemporary art is much more difficult because contemporary art challenges your thoughts and makes you think rather than 
you are looking at a, an, a pretty object per right. se. Right. Henry, so just going forward, if the government has listened to your views and, and the community's views as well and move forward with a new arrangement for the quarantine arrangement, say if inbound quarantine say, is abolished, where um, mainland, but the mainland uh, borders remain closed, do you still see a continued growth in attendance from overseas visitors? Uh, yes. If we make a differentiation about uh, vaccination so that those who are va fully vaccinated will be able to basically come in and out very freely with certain tests again, uh, I think Hong Kong Center for as a regional headquarter, uh, Center for Exhibitions, Center for Food and Beverage and Center for other businesses will come back uh, very quickly because by now, I don't think they have really entrenched themselves into other parts of Asia as well. Uh, they have moved there temporarily. But if we leave them there for too long, then they will become fairly well entrenched and we will not be able to bring them back. Right, Henry, we have to take a break now. But viewers, stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. With us tonight is the chairman of the board of the West Kowloon Cultural District Authority, Mr. Henry Tang. And we have been talking about the impact of the economic downturn on the West Kowloon Cultural District. So, Chairman, in the first half, you have categorically tell us that um, the two latest museum, the Palace Museum and the Empress Museum, are doing well with attendance. So, let's look at uh, some history. Um, the, this whole area was proposed by our first chief executive, Mr. Tung Chi Wa, in 1998, in response to a survey of visiting tourists who cited a lack of cultural uh, attractions. I mean, international financial centre like London has the West End, New York has the Broadway, Hong Kong hasn't got anything at that stage. So Hong Kong now, we're talking about reigniting Hong Kong. We have to start again. Do you think this, that all this museum is going to play an important role? I feel very, very strongly that art and culture will become a very new industry for Hong Kong to be engaged in. This I industry will bring Hong Kong economic development in the future, will engage and offer opportunities for all walks of life, both in terms of audience, uh, participations, as well as opportunities for our youth. Because if I look at Hong Kong, and I remember this conversation with Tong Chi Wa very well back in 1998, at that time we were faced with Asia financial crisis. And he was asking me, what should we do about our economy? Because he knows I have very rich experience and very wide knowledge of Hong Kong's economic development. So what should we do? How do we uh, revive Hong Kong, its economy? Should we go into gambling? Uh, and I said, CH, we have to really think about, is there any other cities in the world that are successful in financial services and gambling at the same time? And there isn't. The only cities that have both is London, and London have these uh, exclusive clubs in Mayfair who <laughs> engage in some form of recreational gambling, but it's not really gambling per se. New York has Atlantic City, but it's not New York. It's in New Jersey. So there is no city in the world that can do both successfully because it attracts two breeds of people, and the culture is quite different. Totally. So that's why I said we should concentrate on financial services. But I already felt very strongly at that time that the new bright spot for Hong Kong's eco economic development in the future, in addition to what we are, we've, we've been doing well, is in terms of both arts and culture, as there were certain innovation uh, in technology. Right. So uh, I think I was, uh, it was a good, it was a, it was a good call. Uh, we don't want to compete with Macau in terms of gambling. Mm -hmm. We're very happy to allow people who want to uh, gamble recreationally to go to Macau over the weekend and right. have, to have fun in all the beautiful casinos and the hotels there. Right. Uh, but concentrate on, on their day jobs, where there's financial services, shipping, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Right. So, Chairman, when you're mentioning this good intention, I mean, but the cost of the building this whole district has always been 
a source of contention. I've I've done some background work. The government has allocated 21.6 billion of endowment fund in 2008, but construction costs have overrun it for the past 24 years, and there were already a funding gap of 11.7 billion. Reported four years ago, someone called it a fiscal abyss. So can you tell us, as a chairman, are you worried that you don't have enough money to keep the projects going? Uh, I am of course worried because I, I spent my life in business and I, I was the financial secretary for four years. And although I've done very well with public finances, but I feel that for some, re- for some reason, I always walk into a job whenever there's a crisis. <laughs> and West County is exactly the same way. I was uh, asked to serve as the chairman for the second time right. uh, because I know it's actually in quite deep financial troubles. Uh, I reviewed it very carefully. It, it's of course a whole bunch of reasons. I won't, go in, I won't right, elaborate yeah. on mm-hmm. them uh, individually, but partly the delay is because the construction, the main constructor, the construction company went into financial trouble right. and we got a lot of uh, problems to, to sort out, including the delay. The overrun is because uh, we seriously underestimated. Uh, back in 1998 and 1999, the cost of constructing these projects. But uh, when you are sitting on 21.6 billion in 2008, I can't go back to God, to finance committee and say I want more money. No. And they say, well, why don't you spend the 21.6 first? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't say you're you're poor because you're still sitting on it. Mm-hmm. So I said no. Let's time it so that we will build, build it in a, in a manner where the projects that cost money, like all the performing arts and all the museums, they cost money. And the ones that will make money can go uh, step by step, hand in hand and step by step. So this way, we will try and balance as much of it as possible. Right, so what will be the next installment? We know that the uh, Lyric Theatre Complex is on, on, the, on, the, on the drawing board. Um, any supply chain issues, will this still go on? Well, actually the Lyrics Theatre is already rising out of the ground. Right. From my office in the West Kowloon Authorities District, I can see it coming out of the ground and then it's, it's already beginning to build on the superstructure. So it will fit, the building will finish uh, sometime next year, 23, 24. Mm-hmm. And then with, those, uh, with the internal fittings and all the testing out, it's a very, very complicated uh, uh, project because there's an MTL rail running out, running underneath it. So therefore, it's actually sitting on a platform that's on giant springs, so that it, the vibration does not transmit onto the buildings right, uh, I see. and isolated with the transfer plate. So, uh, I in, I have every intention to bring that to fruition mm-hmm. because by the time the Lyrics Theatre is built, the whole western part of the West Kowloon Cultural District will basically be finished. Right. Uh, it's already attracting a lot of people, both to the museums as well as to our art park, and also to our, uh, f- our free space, right. which I believe with the addition of the Lyrics Theater, it will only enhance the whole Western, West Kowloon Cultural District. Right. Uh, Chairman, I mean, we had um, Rinford Engelbert Briskers here on the show recently, and I think Hong Kong is very fortunate to have the Hong Kong Jockey Club fully funding the Palace Museum. So, are there any such more initiatives that you have planned so that we'll be able to, to, to get to enjoy the whole the district as soon as we can? Well, we want, we of course uh, thank Winfred at the Hong Kong Jockey Club charities very, very much because the Hong Kong Jockey Club has been. Uh, both a benefactor of the Hong Kong uh, system and their licenses, but as well as a major contributor to our tax revenue and to our, to our charities. So the Palace Museum was built based on three and a half billion funding from the Hong Kong gov- uh, from the Hong Kong Jockey Club, and I'm looking forward to the Jockey Club continue to, to support us right. in the next uh, future projects because after Lyrics Theatre we are still looking for funding to build our music center right. because the whole district lacks a, uh, a music uh, center. Right. So we're looking for it to build our, our new Philharmonic Hall. Right, I mean, Winfred watch our show regularly, so I'm sure she'll hear your request. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, um, Win- Winfred is a great friend of mine, and, <laughs> and he, is, uh, no, he, is, he is very much his hardest in Hong Kong, and he is 
basically a Hong Kong person. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm sure he will, he will look at every project. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, Chairman, the, the last yeah. area we uh, would like to ask you before the end of the show is that in, in our nation's 14th five-year plan, Hong Kong is to develop into an East meets West center for international cultural exchange and particularly to showcase our Chinese arts and culture to the world. So that gives Hong Kong a very unique position in this part of, of, our, of our nation. So our young talent is something that someone messaged me and asked me that we must ask you this question. I mean, how are you going to, being you as a chairman with all your, 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 your plans and your insights, how are we going to nourish our local talents? Because how do you balance whether to invite international, world-renowned uh, uh, shows to come, but cost more, but we don't have to give the opportunity for our youngsters. So where do, where do we go from that? Well, first of all, Eugene, both those two are not mutually exclusive. Uh, I think we should nurture our local talents and also uh, invite foreign talents to exhibit in our museums. Because, first of all, I think any, lo any uh, museum need to have local content, and we do. We have actually, in our, in, in our collection at M+, we do have quite a lot of Hong Kong content. At Palace Museum, we have one exhibit, we have one hall out of nine that is done by Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong curators and uh, artists from here. So it is a very popular one and I was there uh, a number of times and some of the exhibits are really truly astounding. Mm. So we do have the talents and right. we need to continue to nurture them. Right, but Chairman, some of the uh, performers in, in, in singing or, 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 or plays and all that, they've been telling me that I mean, they, they really want to use that as a base, future base, but the rent they were offered is much higher than other places <laughs> they're renting right now. Will you do something about that to making sure our talent will be able to enjoy this great facility? We don't have enough space. Uh, because for performing artists, the only space we have now is Situ Center. So until the Lyric Theatre is up and running, and until, uh, espe especially the Lyrics Theatre, until it is up and running, where we will have multiple different size uh, uh, performing performance halls as well as rehearsal halls, um, we, we, also, we don't have enough uh, venue. Right, thank you for telling us, and thank you very much for giving us the latest update on the West Kowloon Cultural District and showing how it can be instrumental in telling a good Hong Kong story. Have a pleasant evening and good night.